So you have finally made your very first lotion. Exciting stuff. Now you are positively itching, in a good way of course, uh, to change things up. But as a new lotion formulator, you aren't sure what you can and can't do without making the entire thing blow up in your face. Thankfully, it is ridiculously easy to start customizing your lotion formulations, if you know where to start. So, in this video, I'm going to share 20 <laughs> quick, easy, and inexpensive ways to personalize your emulsions so you can start creating bespoke skincare. Trying out these ideas will teach you so much about formulation, what you like and what does what. And once you've worked your way through this list, or honestly, even just half of it, you will be well on your way to formulating your very own emulsions from scratch. Now, we've got a lot to get through, so let's get into it. But first, you need to know four simple rules of changing up a formulation. Rule number one, reduce potential waste by starting small. 100 grams or three and a half ounces is usually a good batch size for experimental emulsions. Rule two, so you know exactly what you did. Take lots of notes. Err on the side of too many notes rather than too few. And don't just write down what you did. Write down what you think of the finished product and make sure you label that finished product so you can tie it back to your notes later on. Rule three, so you know what particularly worked or didn't. If it changes new, isolate it. If you alter like five things straight off the bat and the formulation flops or you just flat out hate it, you won't know why. And rule four is mostly specific to emulsions, but to ensure it remains stable, keep the phase sizes the same to start with, but more on that later. The formulation we'll be working from today is a lightly modified version of my Easy Natural Lotion for Beginners. All I've done is switched up the preservative to Liquid Germal Plus, as it has a much broader effective pH range, meaning we don't have to be quite as concerned about the final pH of our experimental emulsions. This does mean the lotion isn't natural anymore, but it does make it a much easier base formulation to experiment with. Okay, our first strategy is a super simple way to introduce some all natural scent to the formulation. Use a hydrosol instead of some of the water. I like to swap 20 to 30% of the distilled water for a hydrosol of choice and then carry on as usual. Our next tip is an easy way to add some skin soothing benefits and boost the label appeal. Trade 20% of the distilled water in the formulation for aloe vera juice. And this is a thin watery ingredient. Do not use a thick green gel from the drugstore. Now, aloe vera is lovely, but it is electrolyte rich and that can thin your emulsion. So start around 20% and if that works well, you can use more next time. This next change makes a lot of people nervous, but try a different emulsifying wax. I have found Emulsifying Wax NF, Olive M1000, Redemulse SCG, Polowax, Montanov 68, BTMS 25, and BTMS 50 are generally pretty interchangeable on a one-for-one -one basis in most formulations. You will likely notice a change, but the emulsion shouldn't fail. I made a whole video on this, and I'll link it in the description box below if you'd like to learn more. I get asked about this next swap all the time, and it's a really easy and fun one. Try a different liquid oil or blend of liquid oils instead of whatever the formulation calls for. Just make sure the total percentage of liquid oils stays the same and the consistency of the emulsion shouldn't change much. I'd also recommend sticking to cheaper oils as you're doing your initial get to know you kind of emulsion experiments. If you're looking for an easy way to get some herby goodness into your emulsion, try using an herb or herb infused carrier oil instead of some or all of the oil in your formulation. You can purchase infused oils or make your own using thoroughly dried herbs, a carrier oil, and some thyme. If you love the idea of formulating with herbs and other gorgeous botanicals, you should sign up for Formula Botanica's totally free formulation masterclass. They'll be teaching you how to create your very own all-natural botanical eye cream from scratch. I've earned two formulation diplomas from Formula Botanica, and I learned a lot studying with them. If you've been wanting to accelerate your formulation journey so you can start creating your own skincare or even launch your very own brand, definitely check them out. I've included a link to the free botanical eye cream masterclass in the description box below. Now, let's get back to the tips. For a lighter, faster absorbing lotion, try a trick that the pros use all the time. Use an ester like isopropyl muristate, cocoa caprolate, or medium chain triglycerides instead of some or all of the liquid oil. If you'd like an 
ever so slightly thicker, richer emulsion, try using a soft butter like shea butter or mango butter instead of a liquid oil. For even more of a viscosity boost, try a brittle butter like cocoa butter or kokum butter. You can also try a blend of butters and oils. I tend to prefer more oils than butters in my emulsions, but experiment and see what you think. If you're looking for even more of a viscosity boost, even more, try swapping 2-3% of the oil or butter in the formulation for a fatty thickener like subtle alcohol for really silky thickening, stearic acid for creamier thickening, and cetyryl alcohol for both slip and creaminess. Or if there's already a fatty thickener in the formulation, swap it for a different fatty thickener to change up the skin feel of the finished emulsion. You can also try a blend of fatty thickeners. I'm a really big fan of combining silky, subtle alcohol with rich and creamy stearic acid for the best of both worlds. Okay, now we're more than halfway done. This next one is one of my favorites. Try a different humectant. This formulation calls for sodium lactate, so you could try propanidiol or glycerin instead. Just be sure to keep in mind that if you are switching to a humectant that is electrolyte rich, like sodium lactate is, that can impact the viscosity of your formulation. I have also had lots of fun using more or less humectant than a formulation calls for. One of my favorite formulations uses 30% glycerin, an amount I thought was completely bonkers until I saw La Roche-Posay do it, and I tried it myself, and I loved it. Simply adjust the distilled water in the formulation to keep everything adding up to 100%. And one more humectant -y idea? Try a blend of two or more humectants instead of just one. For a different sort of viscosity boost, swap 0.1 to 0.5% of the water in your emulsion for a gum or gelling ingredient. I am loving soft xanthan gum these days, but other options include regular xanthan gum, guar gum, and hydroxyethyl cellulose. If the formulation already has a gum or jelly ingredient, you can try using more or less of it to see what you think, or leave it out altogether. And you can also try blending different gums or jelly ingredients, or using a pre-blended jelly mix like Sola Gum or Eco Gel. To easily add some color to your DIY, incorporate half a percent of a colored mica into the cool-down phase, reducing the distilled water to make room for it. There are other ways to add color to emulsions, but micas are really easy and there are tons of options. And lastly, we have made it to number 20! This change is where you can really start to fundamentally alter the structure of your emulsions and make decisions about richness and viscosity from the ground up. So be sure to watch this video next to learn all about the phase sizes of emulsions and how you can use them to your advantage to create the lotions and creams of your dreams.